When somebody says to me, old maps, exciting interactive experience isn't the first thing that pops into my mind. But that's exactly the cartographic gauntlet which has been laid down by the British Library to several different groups of young developers as they engage in the off the map competition. The British Library provided the maps from its archive of 4 million and games developer Crytek provided games design students with the tools to create virtual worlds via its CryEngine software. The students combined the cartography and the game engine to bring these sometimes ancient maps to life. Games are virtual worlds and virtual worlds are maps in their own right. Um, we have a lot of maps in the British Library. Um, what we're interested to see was how this um, gaming engine um, transformed a, a two-dimensional flat piece of paper with an image on it into a 3D immersive world. Six teams competed against one another, with the winning entry courtesy of De Montford University in Leicester. Their effort allows the player to explore a pre-Great Fire of London version of Pudding Lane. It just had so much story, it was just rich with history and uh, different elements and dynamics and the actual size of it, of course, was a real challenge, but then also getting across all that history and the characters and the streets and the story that London has to tell. We wanted to, to get that across visually. Other stories are being told at Game City which aren't so visual. There is a way back for you to the world of the living. As well as up-and-coming students, established indie developers take part in this festival, often presenting unusual games in very unusual or unexpected environments. I'm underneath Nottingham in the dungeons in the galleries of justice, not because I've been a naughty boy, but because I'm here to play a new smartphone game. It's a game that forces the player not to rely on their eyes, but to rely on their ears. That's because it's a title driven entirely by sound. Hello. What was that? Papa Sangre 2 makes use of actor Sean Bean's vocal talents to spin a yarn which sees the player journey through limbo in an attempt to return to the land of the living. Brace yourself. It's spooky and atmospheric. The game's graphics exist purely for rudimentary navigation and movement. Everything else unfolds entirely through the narration of the actor, formerly known as Ned Stark. Not if you can hear me, nor clap. So your mind, I believe, has the best graphics and what you don't have allows you to fill in all the gaps and particularly this works really well with horror and adventure. Back above ground, an entirely different take on the shooting genre, courtesy of one of the minds behind legendary first person shooter, Goldeneye, Martin Hollis. The way it works is two cameras move over the market square, each controlled by one player. Each player is supposed to choose someone in the market square to make a couple or a friendship to bring two people together who are formerly strangers and to create a new relationship. And then that, those two selected people come back, play the game at the desk, control the cameras. It's my impression that there's enough military shooters or the jocular term is man shooter, you know, starring a big burly guy with a vast array of military equipment and your, your series of interactions is to go up to people and kill them repeatedly again and again and again. You know, I appreciate there's a wide range of people who enjoy that. Me personally, I'm creatively inspired to make new interactions and new kinds of entertainment. Whether it's using games technology in education or for entertainment, this festival is an excellent example of the growing maturity of the games industry.